Hi guys, this is Sadek from Rodman.com. In this video, we'll show you how to root any Android phone via Sukisu Ultra. So there are two ways of getting this job done. The first way is to use a custom kernel. This is quite an easy way. You simply have to flash a kernel and get the job done. But not every Android phone has a custom kernel that supports Sukisu Ultra. So in that case, you may use the second approach, the manual approach, in which you have to manually patch, then flash the boot or the init boot IMG file. I'll show you both the approaches. So please take a backup of all data on your phone. And let's get started. First off, let's flash a custom kernel and get this job done. So in this regard, your first course of action is quite simple. Find a custom kernel that supports this Sukisu Ultra. For example, currently I'm using a Poco F5. This is a Poco F5 and in this case, there is a custom kernel known as Templar kernel which supports Sukisu Ultra. You could see over here if I go to the Files tab. So it's there in the name only. Sukisu Ultra is there. So this is the custom kernel which I have to flash. So for flashing a custom kernel, if you found a kernel, then the next step is to choose the approach or the method. There are two ways of flashing a custom kernel via the custom recovery and using fireboot command. It's highly recommended that you choose the custom recovery because it's same for all the Android phone. But if you don't have a custom recovery, you may choose the Android the fireboot command approach as well. But the issue with the fireboot command is that it's not a universal approach. On some phones, you have to flash in the boot slot. On some phone, you have to use the vendor real key M slot. So please first check for yourself on which phone you have to flash the custom kernel and then only get the job done. For example, in the Pixel 6a, the kernel is flashed in the boot slot. So please verify if you don't have a custom kernel and you're using the fireboot command, please first find out the slot in which to flash the custom kernel. So please take a note of that for now. Let's opt for the, the custom recovery approach. In this regard, your first action is to get the Sukisu Ultra APK file from the official link, only use the official page. So this is the official GitHub page and get the release tab from here. Get the APK file, transfer the file onto your phone. Once you've got the APK file, keep it there. Next up, get the kernel that supports Sukisu Ultra. In my case, I've shown you using this kernel. Once you've got the kernel, transfer the kernel onto your phone as well. So just give me a second. I should be having the kernel onto my phone, onto my PC. Then I will do it a transfer onto my phone. Let's change it to file transfer, the USB mode, which is over here, charging file transfer. And this is the kernel. Let's copy from here, paste the kernel onto my phone. As of now, you should have both the kernel and the Sukisu Ultra APK file onto your phone. This is the kernel which we have got. Downloads may we have the Sukisu Ultra APK file or not. Okay, I guess it's not there for now, but not, not an issue. We'll find the file from the official link and Transfer onto our phone. So this is the APK file. I have now got the APK file as well. Let's transfer the file onto my phone. This will just take a few seconds. This is the Sukisu Ultra. So now we have got both the kernel and the Sukisu Ultra onto our phone. This is the, the kernel Sukisu Ultra. We also have the issue with FS mod. We'll try if that works or not. That's optional. So with that said, once you've got the custom kernel, next up, you have to flash a custom recovery onto your phone. So for that, you may either use the Orange Fox or you have the Apple recovery. So first and foremost, you have to verify if your phone supports the recovery slot or the boot slot. So first off, type in these three commands and then verify if your phone has a recovery slot or not. The commands are as follows over here. Type in these three commands, enable shell commands. If your phone has a recovery slot, you may use the recovery slot to flash the recovery file. If your phone does not have a recovery slot, then you could use the boot command to get the job done. So for example, in case of the recovery slot, you may simply use fastboot, flash recovery and flash the recovery file there. But if that is not the case, then use the fastboot, boot, recovery, let's say recovery.img. Your phone will now go to the recovery mode. From there, you may either install the zip file or choose to install to RAM disk. And then you'll get the recovery file permanently. So for in my case, I'm using a Poco F5, which does have a recovery slot. So we'll flash the recovery in the recovery slot. For that, your first action is to unlock the phone's bootloader. For unlocking, you may either use the fastboot command. The likes of nothing and the pixel support the fastboot flashing unlock command. In case of Xiaomi phones, you have to use the, the hyper exploit approach. I've linked all the articles in my guide. Then in case of Samsung, you have to use the download mode to get the job done. So with that said, my phone is already unlocked. One that is done. Also enable USB debugging by going to settings about phone. Tap on build number seven times, then go back, go to system. Dev options and enable the toggle next to USB debugging as well. Now let's boot the phone to the fast boot mode for flashing the recovery file. Once you unlock the phone, let's now boot to fast boot mode. So get the Android SDK tap tool from your article, extract them onto your PC, type in CMD over here. Now type in the command of ADB, reboot, bootloader and hit the enter key. In the meantime, get the recovery file for your phone and paste it here itself. 
the recovery file for my POCO F5 is over here, Android 15 base. So paste the file inside the folder of Platform Tools. Rename it to something shorter. So let's rename it to TWRP. The name becomes TWRP.IMG. So now let's flash the file onto our phone. For that, type in the command of if your phone has a recovery slot, type in fastboot flash recovery TWRP.IMG. If your phone does not have a recovery slot, in that case, you have to use the fastboot boot command to get the job done. In my case, I have the recovery slot A and B. Let's flash across both the slots A and B. The file will now be flashed in just a few seconds. After that, type in the command fastboot, reboot, recovery, hit the enter key. The phone should now be in the TWRP recovery in 4 to 5 seconds. Let's wait for that to complete. And then we'll flash the custom kernel onto our phone. If you have used the fastboot flash recovery command, then the recovery has been flashed successfully and permanently. But if you use the fastboot boot command, in that case, either flash the recovery zip file if you have, or you may either go to advanced and then choose the from here, select flash. Okay, my phone does not have a RAM disk. If your phone has a RAM disk, choose install to RAM disk and the recovery will flash permanently. If I have this, okay, let me show you. RAM disk should be here as well. The You could see the RAM disk slot is over here. You may flash to the RAM disk slot if your phone has it. You can this article or you could see install recovery RAM disk or simply flash the recovery zip file or choose the RAM disk. Both will get the job done. So in our case, we already have the recovery file flashed permanently. So moving on, you may now choose the, the custom kernel, which in my case is this one. Swipe to flash. The flashing will now start. Take up to around, I guess, 10 to 15 seconds at the very max. The flashing is going on and this should now get over in 4 to 5 more seconds. And once that is complete, tap on reboot and choose system. The phone will now go to the OS and you should now have the custom kernel installed. After that, please install the Tsukisu Ultra APK as well to verify the result. So this will take just a few seconds. In my case, I'm using the custom recovery approach. I'll show you how to get the job done via the fastboot command as well. But fastboot is only used for those phones that does not have a recovery. Otherwise, please go with the recovery method only because that's the recommended approach. It's quite an easy one and quite it's a same for all the Android phone in case of recovery. So with that said, the phone should now be in the recovery in the OS. And we should now have the Sukisu Ultra obtained root via this kernel. If you can't find a kernel for your phone, let me know. I might be able to help you find the kernel that supports the Sukisu Ultra. And the phone should now boot to the OS in just a few more seconds. So let's see what happens now. After this logo, I guess the phone should boot to the OS. And then we could install the APK file and I guess our task is then complete. So currently you have obtained root, but in the front end, don't have the app to interact with. Let me first increase the brightness. Now that's complete. Open the file app onto your phone. Any one will do. And then from there, install the Sukisu Ultra APK, which is this one. Take a few more seconds and install. So let's install it and now tap. Okay, you might get a prompt. More details. Install anyway. Or you may also turn off the plain integrity checker. Okay, it's not plain integrity checker. I guess it's the tape protect. So please turn that off if you want. Now tap on open. So guys, as you could see, it's now working via the built-in custom kernel and we have obtained root permanently. So that's great to see. You may now flash, flash the module from this section. As you could now see, we have flashed a couple of modules as well. Or you may give it the root access for all the apps of your choice. For example, to give the root access to the ADB shell, I've enabled this just now. Now you could, if you type in ADB shell and then the issue command, you could see we have obtained root. We have got the hash. So it's now in the rooting environment. So you may give the root access from this. It's the same as the kernel SU app. You could see all the functions same. You may flash the module from here. Use the KPM module from this section. And that is it. We have obtained root. Okay, in rare cases, it might show as not working over here. Let me show you. I mean this. You might see something like this. It's nothing to worry about. Simply reboot to recovery once again. And then once again, flash the, the custom kernel onto your phone. And that is it. I'm again repeating. If you're having the not installed message, simply reboot to the recovery mode. And once again, flash the custom kernel. And that is it. It will then be rectified. So guys, this was the first approach of obtaining root via the Sukisu Ultra using a custom kernel. Now let me show you how to get the job done via the fastboot commands. If you have a custom kernel, but you don't have a recovery, in that case, you may use the fastboot command as well. But again, I'm repeating, it's not a universal approach. Some phones use the boot partition, some use the vendor DLKM, some might use any other slot as well. So please verify which slot your phone is using beforehand and only then to move ahead. After that, once you've got the kernel, Place the kernel inside the folder of platform tools. After that, simply boot to fastboot mode and type in the command for your kernel. 
forward slash in the boot slot, use this command. In the vendor detail game mode, use this command and get the job done. And that is it. Then type in fastboot reboot, install the Sukisu Ultra app and task stands complete. The only thing to keep in mind is to find the kernel, find the slot on which the custom kernel has to be flashed. The only thing to keep in mind is to find the slot on which the kernel has to be flashed. For example, in my case, the kernel should be flashed in the boot slot. In some phones, they require the vendor detail game mode. So please first find the slot and then use the, the command accordingly from here. So simply place the kernel file over here. After that, use the command of this one to flash it. Then fastboot reboot, install the APK file of Sukisu Ultra and that is it. You have obtained root. So this was the first approach of obtaining root via a custom kernel. Now let me show you how to get the job done. That is why that is how to root a phone by Sukisu Ultra if you don't have a custom kernel. So for example, my Pixel 6a currently don't have a custom kernel. I'll show you how to root it using the patching of the boot or the init boot file. So let's get started with this approach as well. First and foremost, you have to find your OS version. If it's using the, if it came with the Android 12 or older version, use the boot IMG file. If it came with Android 13 or higher version, use the file of init boot. It does not matter on which OS the phone is currently. What matters is the OS version on which the phone initially came with. I am using a Pixel 6 with Android 16. That does not matter. My phone came with Android 12. So I still have to use the boot IMG file for obtaining root. So if that's all well and good, let's get started. So first and foremost, you have to get the executive platform tools which you have done. Then enable USB debugging OEM unlocking. So let me do that on this phone as well. Settings. About phone, type on build number 7 times. Then go back, go to system. Dev options. Enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking and USB debugging as well. Type on OK. You might get one more prompt. Type on allow. And with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let's verify this as well for verification. Type in CMD in the added bar of platform tools. Hit enter. Type in command ADB devices and verify you are having an ID. As you could see, we are having this ID. Now you have to unlock the phone. So in case of Pixel, nothing. Use the forward flashing unlock command to get this job done. In case of the Xiaomi phones, you have to use the either the Mi Flash tool or the HyperOS exploit. All the methods are given here for the Pixel and, and nothing. Use this command. For the other OEMs, simply use these articles. For Xiaomi, Poco, Redmi, use the HyperOS exploit. For Samsung phone, use the Download mode. Then for Realme, you have to use the in-depth test APK and get the job done once you unlock the phone. Your next action, please re-enable USB debugging once again after doing an unlock. Then the step 4 is to get the stock boot or the init boot file. If your phone came with Android 12 or old version, use the boot file. If it came with Android 13 or higher version, use the file of init boot. Moreover, you have to use the same firmware which is currently there onto your phone. Verify that by using the build number of your phone. For example, in my case, the currently installed Firmware is this one. You could see. So I have to get the exact same firmware. Once you've got the firmware, extract it and then get the boot or the init boot file for extraction. I have linked an article for as well. For the OnePlus, you have to use the payload bin file, extract it by firewood enhanced tool, extract the OZIP Realme stock for me using this article. Sony is given here. In case of the Xiaomi phones, you have to extract the firewood ROM by 7-zip. It will be in a dot .tgz format extract. You will get a dot tar file again doing extraction by 7-zip. You'll get all the required files. So get the file of boot or the init boot file accordingly. Once you've got the file, place the stock file onto your phone. I already have the file onto my phone. Just let me show you once again. The stock boot file I'm using currently. Downloads. And this is the boot file which I've got as you could see. So when that is complete, next up, get the Sukisu Ultra APK file onto your phone. Install it. So just give me a second. Sukisu Ultra is here. Let me install the app onto my phone. Again, tap on install anyway. Open. You could see currently it's not installed. Tap on install LKM repair installation. Select choose a file. In my case, it's a boot IMG file. If you want to use the file of init boot, choose that. Tap on next. And it will now patch the file. Place the file inside the folder of downloads. Patching will take just a few seconds and you could now see it's patch. So copy the file from the folder of downloads and place the file onto your PC inside the folder of platform tools. So let's change it to file transfer from here. And let's copy this file from the downloads folder onto our phone and place it inside the folder of platform tools. This is the phone downloads folder. We have the patch file. This is the file kernel issue patch file naming as kernel issue, not an issue. Paste the file inside the folder of platform tools. For the ease of convenience, let's do a file renaming. Rename it to, let's say, sukisu underscore ultra dot img. Whether it's a boot file or the 
in the input file that does not matter simply rename it to sukisu ultra underscore ultra when that is done we could now flash the file onto our phone via fastboot command to obtain root so this is now complete boot the phone to fastboot mode now so type in the command of adb reboot bootloader and hit the enter key the phone should now be in the fastboot mode in few seconds when that is the case you will now flash the file onto your phone so i will explain all the steps over here in case of the boot file you could use the fastboot boot command then do a direct install but in case of the file of init boot you have to use this command to flash it permanently so just to recall in case of the boot file you may either use this command just give me a second fastboot flash boot then the file name and that is it in case of init boot use this command i'm using a boot file the boot file so my th this is the command in my case so copy the command from here paste the command in the cmd window this is the command for me hit the enter key okay the file cannot be found some mistake okay so sukisu ultra let's rename it to sukisu patch that will be much more meaningful sukisu patch the file name is optional you may keep any file name of your choice so in my case i'm using the sukisu patch but it's completely your choice and now let's flash it flashing will take just a few seconds once you flash the file just type in the command of fastboot reboot hit the enter key the first booting up might take up some time because we have flashed the boot file in the boot position so the booting up will take some time that's all normal and you may cho choose any name of your choice the naming is not a convention anyone will do once you flash the file in my case it's a boot file so flash in the boot position if you using the file of init boot flash in the slot of init boot it's your choice once the flashing has been complete type in fastboot reboot the phone will now go to the os and once that is complete let's now open the sukisu ultra app onto our phone which we have just installed it launch it from here and let's see what happens now you could now see we have obtained root in, and is going in the lkm mode currently so again you may give it the root access from this tab flash the mod of your choice give it the root access from here for all the apps of your choice and choose the module flash the module from here and get the job done so the, so guys that's all from this video just to recall once again what all we have done there are two ways of obtain, obtaining the root by sukisu ultra the first one is to flash a custom kernel the next one is to use a patch boot file or the init boot file in case your phone has a custom kernel please use that approach only for flashing a custom kernel you may either use the recovery command or the fast boot command it's recommended to go with the recovery approach because it's quite a simple approach case of recovery simply flash the custom kernel zip file from the recovery then install the apk file in case of the fast boot command first of find the slot on which the kernel is to be flashed either the boot vendor dlkm then flash the kernel in the inside that slot after that install the apk file and get the job done but in case of using if you don't have a custom kernel you have to use the boot or the init boot file so for android 12 or older version use the boot file for the init boot use the android 13 or higher version with which your phone came out of the box and not talking about the current os for example the in my case is current in android 16 but but my phone came with android 12 so i have to use the boot file so keep this point in mind and after that you must simply install the sukisu ultra file and then extract the stock boot or the init boot file then patch that file by sukisu ultra flash that file by fast boot command either the boot file or the init boot this are the command then do a fast boot reboot then install the apk and that is it you have obtained root so guys if you have any query with regard to any of the steps let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching